I'd like to call to order the Landmarks Commission meeting for August 22nd, 2022. Time is currently 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Pete Lynch. Yes. David Craycraft. Here. Jamar Cox. Here. Roger White. Here. Dr. Scott Kelly. Here. Whit Wardell. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to excuse Rich Dobda for, from this, tonight's meeting. I'll second. Roll call. David Craycraft. Yes. Pete Lynch. Yes. Roger White, yes. Jamar Cox. Yes. Whit Wardell. Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly. Yes. Can I get an approval for the July 25th, 2002 Landmarks Commission meeting minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of July 25th. Second. Yes. Roll call. Dr. Scott Kelly. Yes. Jamar Cox. Yes. David Craycraft. Yes. Whit Wardell. Yes. Pete Lynch. Yes. Roger White, yes. Pending applications. The first application on tonight's agenda is CA 22-027. Address of the subject property is 152 West Waterloo Street. Uh, the request this evening is for a new wall sign uh, for the Napa business that is locating into this new facility. Uh, the Frank County Auditor has this property listed as being constructed in 1959. Uh, it's previously gone through uh, major exterior remodeling changes in 2021 from the current property owner. Uh, the Napa facility located at 103 West Waterloo Street is looking to relocate in this facility and is requesting this evening signage for that, uh, that project. Uh, up on the screen is the requested 26 and a half square foot aluminum sign for Napa. Uh, the sign is located to the left of the main entry and is designed with a two inch deep aluminum hexagon pan with a vinyl overlay uh, for the, uh, the graphics. Uh, the sign itself is consistent with the preliminary design for that remodel uh, which showed that if there had to be one tenant that took up the whole space, the sign would be located on the right-hand side in that uh, fiber cement paneling uh, system there. Um, if the building were to have two tenants, they added a second paneling system on the far left uh, with an extra entrance there just in case um, the second tenant was, was present. Um, but the current NAPA facility is looking to take the entire building, so this is the signage they're requesting uh, this evening. Andrew, is there anyone here to represent? Uh, I do not see the representative from the sign company here or the, the property now. Okay. So this is their standard NAPA? No, this is not their standard NAPA logo. Um, typically what their original concept of what they, they do nationwide was for a four foot by three foot um, internally illuminated cabinet that was going to go above this fiber cement area on the, the stonework uh, there above the entrance. Um, after reviewing their initial design with the applicant, um, staff noted that the internal illumination, the cabinet box design um, is something that the Landmarks Commission um, does not permit. Um, additionally, staff shared the renditions of the concept for the remodel showing the original intention behind the sign placement, uh, showing that the commission approved the general location for the signage in 2021. Um, so worked with the applicant on the, the two inch uh, thick aluminum pan design that's up on the screen um, to do something that the Landmarks Commission uh, does have the ability to approve. Will it be illuminated? Uh, there is a um, illuminated bar that's just above the sign. It's kind of hard to see in this graphic here, um, but the property owner designed this type of external illumination so it'd be discreet. Um, given the height of the sign location, they didn't want to do anything uh, with like goosenecks or anything um, external that would clutter that side of the facility. With that type of lighting, Andrew, um, I think my, my only concern would be kind of some glare uh, with this sign being flat. It's a pretty big is. sign, too. Not have any kind of relief or raised letters. Yeah, the application does not note if the vinyl surface is 
um, reflective or not. Um, I know they can make a matte vinyl um, applique or uh, typically they are a little bit reflective, um, but the application does not specify. I mean, can we specify or ask them if they can put a matte finish? Does that make sense for you guys? Or Well, just if, it, if it's flat with the reflection, it just makes it harder to read. If it's got some raised letter or relief to it, that's going to help. But they're not here to talk about it. And that's something that if you guys want to... Um, my recommendation would either be to table it and then I can relay them the feedback or if you guys wanted to provide direction on like a alteration that would be approved, that would obviously speed up um, like the process. They don't have to wait another month to do it into fabrication. Um, I do know they want to open the facility probably prior to the next month's meeting. Um, so if you gave them some direction on what would be approved, then I could take that to them and say this is what was approved or if they wanted to come back and discuss it more then they would have the opportunity in a month if, if they chose that route. I mean I'm not opposed to the sign or the signs. Oh, no, I, I mean this is a, a far cry from what they wanted. And I was not concerned about the glare. Um, th there's no traffic coming at that sign it's back in a parking lot so I was just talk, referring to evening time when the lights on to see it but it's it's probably not that big a deal yeah you know, and the distance from this from from Waterloo is mm -hmm. is quite large and I think that the light coming off of it would be dissipated by the time it got to Waterloo mm -hmm. so I have no problem no, I agree with, with the you. sign as stands yeah would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make I'll make a motion to approve application CA-22-027 as stated. I will second that. Roll call please. Roger White, yes. David Craycraft? Yes. Pete Lynch? Yes. Jamara Cox? Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly? Yes. Whitmore Dell? Yes. The next application on tonight's agenda is CA 22-028. Uh, the location subject property is 108 North High Street. Uh, this is an industrial building that was constructed in 1987. Uh, prior to this uh, building being located on the property, the site housed the early grain storage structure and processing facility, uh, which was a series of buildings in that lot that was first constructed in 1868. Uh, this uh, building was substantial in its, its mass and height um, prior to its demolition but after it caught fire it um, kind of mirrored the industrial use of the uh, chaining mill that's located on the other side of the railroad tracks. Uh, this property since its construction has not been before the Landmarks Commission uh, for any alterations for approval. Uh, this evening uh, a new uh, property owner has taken over the facility. Uh, they are looking to remodel the exterior of the existing building uh, most of what they're looking to do is uh, considered maintenance or a like-for-like -like change that does not require Landmarks approval. Uh, however, a couple items that they are looking to do um, do require the Landmarks review uh, this evening. Um, this is the front of the building that you can see from North High Street. Uh, what the um, applicant is looking to do as part of their overall kind of improvement package is they're looking to paint the building a white color um, they're redoing the uh, roof on the building. You can kind of see that in the pictures here now. Um, on the north and south sides of the building, there's some of the uh, siding panels that are kind of translucent to let some natural light in. Uh, over time, those have kind of greened with algae and, and, and baked in the sun, so they're looking to replace those with new uh, translucent panels to clean up the um, siding along with the new paint. Um, they're also looking to um, They've done some extensive landscaping around the facility, um, trying to clean it up. Uh, here's kind of a list of what I asked the applicant to put together just to show you guys kind of the process of what they're doing for the entirety of the building. Like I said, most of this list does not have to go to you for approval, but I thought it'd be helpful just to show the entire project's uh, scope, uh, what the applicant's looking to do. Um, 
for those translucent panels, that's this top section of siding you can see here on this middle picture. Um, this is the rear of the building where there was some damaged siding that they've replaced. Uh, this siding color is a off-white color. I believe it's pretty close to kind of what they're looking to paint the whole building uh, from the green too, uh, just to give you an idea of, of kind of the scope. Um, for the items that do require the landmarks review and approval, uh, the first item is uh, on the three dock doors in the front of the building. This far left one, they're looking to change it out from an eight foot tall door to a 10 foot tall door. Uh, with the change um, in the door height, they would be replacing the um, garage door itself uh, on to a style that's similar um, to what's shown on the right. Uh, the middle door, they indicated, has some functionality problems with it. So they're going to keep the middle door the same size opening as what's there now, but replace the, the far left in the middle with the newer door system. And the far right door will remain the, the same as is. Uh, the difference between the three doors uh, will be the right door will have the two window kind of panels in it and the two replacements do not. Uh, with the uh, project for uh, the upgrade for the facility, um, they're replacing all the dock bumpers, all the dock uh, bumper pads, the lift gates. Uh, those are external to the building that do have a, I guess, a newer look to them. Um, while the function of them will be primarily the same, all that material is going to be switched out for, for something new. Um, and then lastly, uh, with the request, I apologize, the, the scanned in image I used did not turn out so well. Uh, they're looking to put a sign on the far right hand of the, the building here, um, just showing that Crimson Cup is using this facility for their storage space. Um, the sign itself is six foot uh, wide by three foot tall. Um, will just be a flat metal panel which will have a graphic on it that says the address of the facility and then the name of really the, the entity that's occupying the space. Uh, if there's any kind of questions from the commission, um, I'd be glad to help answer. Um, the applicant is here if you have any questions for him. Does the sign meet our standards? You said it's three by six. Six. three by six. Yeah. So the update to the old town signage guidelines in 2018 or 19, um, they did not put a cap on the maximum size for signage. Uh, it was just regulated to be what the landmarks commission felt was appropriate for the building. Um, the applicant did this kind of wide shot here, showing the entire length of the building here to kind of discuss the what they're saying is the appropriate scale for that sign. Um, and then the, the sign design itself is um, something that is within um, what's approvable. Uh, the original rendition here that's kind of been blacked out had it as a cabinet box that was illuminated, uh, but after showing them the sign code section, they're just going to make it a flat metal panel um, to, to eliminate that, that concern. And that'll be white? Yes. White with red letters, and then there's a small red Joe, can I get you to sign in and then just stand at the podium so I can get you on the audio? And then is the is the siding behind that, that'll be white? Correct. Yeah, I think, and Joe can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this siding panel they replaced in the back is close to what they want the whole building to be. Yes. I mean, I was just thinking if the, if the white, if the sign's white and if the siding's white, will the sign just kind of get lost in the... Well, the, the logo is red, and then the, uh, the address below it is red. There's currently an address on the building, but it's on the left side. We've trimmed the trees. You, it's still hard to see it if you're heading north. Mm -hmm. So I would rather a semi that might be coming that way for deliveries to be able to see it than trying to figure out how he's going to turn around. So we're going to retain the address on the left side, and then the new one will be the the name of the building and the address. And this is strictly going to be used for storage. So shouldn't be a ton of traffic. Given the size of the sign, I kind of like it white on white. And the mm -hmm. overall size of the sign will tone it down. diminish, right? Yeah. Let's see any issues here. I mean, I don't have any issues with the the height of the door or the the new two new doors not having windows in it mm -hmm. 
main door stays the same, would be painted white like the rest of the building? They'll be white. Yeah, those are brand new doors. And they'll be painted the same color. So, Andrew, the sign is pretty much like you drew it in. That's the style. Yeah, this is the sign that the applicant provided um, to scale in this location. Like I said, just the scanned copy didn't turn out so well. Y'all have any questions? If not, I can make a motion to approve application CA-22-028 as stated. I'll second. Roll call. David Craycraft? Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly? Yes. Roger White? Yes. Pete Lynch? Yes. Jamora Cox? Yes. Whitworth Bell? Yes. Thank Thanks, you. Joe. Thanks. Thanks. The next application on tonight's agenda is CA-22-029. Uh, the location of the subject property is 18 East Columbus Street. Uh, the request this evening is for new vinyl windows on the second floor. Uh, the subject property here um, is part of the Columbus, Columbus Street Historic District, um, one of the first historic districts um, established in the Old Town area in 1988. Uh, from what staff could dive into in our records, we don't have an exact date of construction. Um, the Franklin County Auditor um, reverts back to 1900 for any property that they don't have the date for. Um, so that's what is shown on the auditor's website. Um, this property has been through a series of landmarks approvals starting in 2006. Uh, the current property owner has been involved uh, most recently uh, since 2018 onward with uh, renovations they're doing to the building uh, to kind of improve the existing space a little bit better for existing tenants. Uh, back in 2020, uh, the applicant went before the Landmarks Commission for a review for the uh, Northwest storefront, um, kind of reskinning and redoing that. Uh, during that time frame, they stayed during the new business section of the meeting. Uh, they talked to the commission about replacing the vinyl windows on the second floor. Um, had a, a contractor with them to kind of go over what they were thinking at the time. Uh, they have filed the application this evening um, to do the new windows on the second floor. Uh, going through each elevation here, but kind of just showing the photos I have. Uh, this first one's from 2018, uh, from that original discussion. Uh, showing the existing windows that are on the, the front face of the building here, a relief face here in the back, um, the um, replacement windows they're requesting here on the right-hand side are all two over two. Uh, looking at the um, west elevation here, you can see two more windows are being added. Um, those both also have existing uh, two over two uh, uh, true divided light grids. Uh, looking at the rear of the building here, it's a one over one, a slightly smaller window than what's on the other elevations. And then looking at the other side of that south elevation here, that wasn't captured in the, the previous photograph, um, is a, a two over two with a true divided light grid pattern. Uh, based on what the applicant submitted this evening for the new windows, staff is assuming that the grid work is internal to the panes of the glass. Um, there's no indication on the um, branding website for the new windows that they have an SDL option. Um, but I did include in your packets a copy of the minutes from January of 2020 uh, when you guys last discussed that with the applicant on their window uh, request um, just to have a little bit of a refresher for you guys. Are the new windows going to be the same color as the existing windows? I uh, do not know if the applicant specified it in their submittal. Is the applicant here? Do you mind stepping up? Sign in, please. going to be white vinyl.
and all, we're, all we're replacing is the sash will come out and the new fixture will, will set in that area. So basically the rest of the trim around the window will stay the same. This is all second floor windows, correct? Correct. Now you mentioned they're going to be white. Now the, the, the first floor is what, black or painted? They're painted and there are some aluminum storm windows over it, I believe. But you're proposing white? White upstairs. vinyl. I mean, sorry, do you have a reason why they won't match the color of the windows on the first floor? It's hard to get windows, vinyl windows, to match the color that's there with the paint that they used. And then these windows on the back, those are the storm, storms? On the bottom, windows. on the first floor? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> four different styles of windows going on here. Was everyone on the board when this came through last time? I think so. Yeah. Two more? Mm -hmm. So the three vinyl or four vinyl windows on the left side of the building that were added, mm -hmm. um, if everybody remembers, those were not approved. The one over ones that are in the little bump out on the side. Yeah, right there. <clears throat> These. Yeah, so just around the corner on the front there was one vinyl window that had also been replaced um, without Landmark's permission. It is a two over two, but it has grids between the glass, correct? I'm not sure about the first floor. I've only sure. been in the second floor. This is where vinyl windows get a little tricky when you get into these traditional colors and matching into what's already there. We've already got four different style windows going on here. Uh, typically for historic district windows, we want to see simulated divided light for sure, which I don't think this specifies. Um, not grids between the glass. The grid is between the glass. Yeah. I think I turned in the brand of window we were using. So for the arched window in the front, um, if you're replacing just the sashes, it's, it's hard to tell that detail in this picture. The arch would stay. Arch stays, but the windows are just square. And they the, don't actually have an arch top. No. Okay. So that's just, that's the trim, that's the arch. Yes. Not the windows. Correct. So if the windows are white, you're planning on leaving the trim around the windows the same color as yes. existing? Is it, is it a green? It's kind of a gray black, I guess. Gray black. If you look at the uh, cover sheet on the staff report, I believe it's in 2006. It's called an overcast gray is the trim color that was approved. Have you looked into any aluminum clad windows where you can get closer to that color? No. How many total windows are we talking here? I believe seven. Seven units. Some of them some of them are double. I'm just not sure how the, the white aluminum or the light white windows will look with the first floor windows. Right. Well, you can see what they look like on the, the little bump out here. Well, yeah. Of course, that's painted a different color. I 
I think for the vinyls, if, if we were to approve the vinyl windows, they're going to have to be simulated divided light, not, not grids between the glass. I well, know. I, and I think Andrew specified that that's what you were required to have. For vinyl, we didn't used to allow vinyl windows in the historic district at okay. all. So now that we are, that's been a requirement that's been... Well, they're, they're available. I just did that quote because I thought you said Right. We just don't know exactly what your... Is it the same window? Usually it changes to a different window when you go to an SDL, a true SDL. I think both are available from that model or that manufacturer. <clears throat> yeah, I briefly looked um, at the WinCore website and I couldn't find any... Usually the window websites are pretty hard to click on and try to figure out where you're going. Um, I didn't see anything that said they did or did not. It was really like have the rep come out, look at it, uh, you know, sort of prompts. Are we in agreement that the correct window would need to be on this application? Yeah. Would you be all right if we table this until you can get the proper window? Then we're going to be into winter again. Could be next month. We're well, ordering windows window. takes six to eight weeks right. if we're lucky. Right. So, yeah, that's the issue. Without knowing exactly which window it is, I can't approve the one that's on here now with grids between the glass. Bruce, you said they, you're confident they do have an option for the SDL for the grids to be on the outside of the glass? Yes. So if we make that a condition with the same manufacturer window as long as it's SDL? Yeah, and if, he doesn't, if they don't have it, then he can always come back and show a new uh, presentation. That way, at least, if they do, he can, keep, he can get rolling. Right. I still have a problem with the white vinyl contrasting with the first floor. Um, when you look at the uh, package back on the rear page, third page, it does show that the exterior laminate co exterior colors. I guess that maybe I was reading that wrong. I was showing black, brown, and bronze. Uh -huh. That's what I'm seeing right here. Yes. And I would much rather have a something that came in closer to the overcast gray than white. Is this window approved? No. None, none of the vinyl windows that are in the building currently have been approved. Bruce, what would you see if you pulled the sash out and put the new window in? Like what's on the screen here? Would it just be this bottom sill plate that would remain blue, or would the well, there's would, some wood would there be like there. A, a trim of the existing color, and then like the white sitting yes. behind it? Because we're leaving the window frame there, which is some of that painted. If I if I click to this picture for the commission, it's kind of hard to see, but this door jam on this side is white. Would that? Um, I guess painting all the existing trim white, that way there's not that contrast like Mr. Wright was talking about with that. Um, First floor windows. Yeah, so, so it all kind of blends together so and matches. That, that, that could be done. <coughs> does that, does that, that help you? I don't think the homeowner would care about that. Because I don't think that trim's been painted since 2006 when it was first approved based off of the, uh, the photos I took. Looks like the bottom door in the, I guess that's the right, right side, is also whatever that same color is. So we'd be talking all the trim and doors. We could do all the trim white, if that would help. Door, bottom windows, to make it look more uniform. I think as long as it's uniform, I can, I can go with that. The best we can. Well, some of them have aluminum storm windows, so kind of tough to paint that. Well, we've already got the, the white vinyl on the bump out, don't we? Yeah. On the bump out and one and, and that one, one over one facing High Street, not right. High Street, uh, Columbus. Right. 
I think it is a two over two. It's just a grid between the glass. Hmm. So you would rather not have the grid between the glass, correct? Correct. Okay. It needs to be a true SDL, true simulated divided light. So we can approve the wind pour window as long as it's a true SDL, not grids between the glass. And painting all the trim and windows on the first floor. First and the whole second place floor. Okay. Is that a motion? I uh, was not making a motion yet, but I can. I'd like to approve CA-22-029 uh, with the following conditions that the wind core windows presented in white vinyl have true simulated divided light, not lights between the glass, and that all trim on the building will be painted to match uh, those white windows, both first and second floor, including the doors. A second. Roll call. Dr. Scott Kelly? Yes. Roger White? Yes. David Craycraft? Yes. Whit Wardell? Yes. Jamar Cox? Yes. Pete Lynch? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. The next application on tonight's agenda is CA 22-030. Uh, the address and subject property is 29 West Oak Street. Uh, the request this evening is for a new metal roof on the subject building. Uh, the subject property was constructed in 1971. Uh, from what I could find, this was actually a vacant lot um, that was in this location. Uh, for all those years, it wasn't a house that was torn down and, and replaced with this one. Um, Given its newer uh, age, the property has never been before the Landmarks Commission for approval from what I could find. Uh, the applicant is requesting this evening to replace the gray three-tab uh, asphalt shingle roof with a new patinaed green standing seam metal roof. Uh, the applicant has provided two sample photographs of what that roof looks like from their contractor. Uh, from what I can see in the photographs here, it does look like a true standing seam uh, metal roof. Um, and again, they're looking for the, the patinaed green uh, color. the applicant present. Michael Falke. I'm not sure I have any questions on this. So the old roof's coming off and the yeah, metal the whole, will be over uh, the whole roof will come off and be an insulating like a bubble kind of a bubble wrap that goes over all of it and there's one by threes that are screwed into the rafters and then the roofing is screwed into those any questions for the applicant The gutters will remain white? Yes, the gutters will remain. It shows in the one photo a roof vent up there. That will remain? Yes. There's actually two roofs vents two, there, two, one for the kitchen vents. and one for the bathroom. Is this a style of metal that's flush panel between the seams? From the photographs I, that he sent, um, I do believe so. Um, because the panels that aren't flush between the seams typically don't have the snow bricks like this one does. Mm -hmm. um, I think the snow brick is just a choice on the contractor given the, the pitch of the roof. Um, but I, I have not seen a... Um, standing scene that has like the wavy lines in between it that has the bricks. That's typically what those wavy lines are for. Striations. Thank you. There it's will a be a snow break on it. Okay. And that's more of a, I mean, I don't know the color is if it's any different. The last picture 
versus the picture on the other side? Well, I think that's just the way the lights are shining okay. on. Yeah, it was, it was a scan picture. Dave said that the scans didn't really turn out as well as uh, as the ones he brought me. Okay. I think it's kind of the oxidized copper yeah. color. Right? Yeah. Further questions? I'd like to make a motion to approve application CA-22-030 as presented. I'll second. Roll call. Dr. Scott Kelly? Yes. Jamal Cox? Yes. David Craycraft? Yes. Roger White? Yes. Pete Lynch? Yes. Whit Wardell? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you, Michael. I've got one more question. Sure. Since it's been approved, can I call the contractor and have him order the material? You're ready to go. Yep. Okay. You'll just want to drop off that roof permit that you uh, started with or have the contractor okay. do it, and then we'll get you squared away. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next application on tonight's agenda is CA 22-031. Uh, address the subject property is 44 Washington Street. Uh, the application this evening has uh, two different items in it uh, that I've broken out for the request for you guys for kind of ease of discussion. Uh, the first request is to enclose a section of the side porch. Uh, the applicant is looking to do a first floor bathroom on the home. And then the second request is to close in the breezeway between the house and the summer kitchen. Uh, up on the screen is the uh, front elevation of the subject property. Uh, this house was constructed around 1910. Uh, the only other uh, application to Landworks Commission, uh, the, the current property owner came through in June of 2018 to get approval for a four foot fence around a section of the rear yard. Um, again, the applicant this evening has the two parts of the application. Uh, the first here is to enclose a section of this side porch uh, that you can see on the screen here. Uh, the porch will be enclosed from the uh, kind of left post walking up to the porch to the main body of the house. Um, when looking at the photographs here, uh, the existing home has a asbestos shingle siding located on it. Uh, the applicant is looking to enclose this section of the porch for a first floor bathroom. Uh, with the project, um, the applicant does show that they are planning on retaining the asbestos shingles. Um, with the remodel, they're going to pull them off and apply them to whatever they um, do to the face on the, the extension. Um, the project itself is this little uh, nine by six and a half um, foot area that would be the location for the new uh, first floor half bathroom. Uh, looking at kind of the section of the porch that's going to be enclosed into the area boxed in in red. Again, the applicant is showing the siding uh, is going to be reused. Uh, they are showing a transom window uh, up in this location here to provide some light in the bathroom. Uh, the application does note that the window will be a white vinyl to match the other white vinyl windows on the home. And then they are going to uh, reuse the existing porch lights um, that are in that location as well. Um, the porch lights, I believe, would be on this elevation here. Uh, very, very roughly the kind of red box in areas, that wall that's facing the door uh, where this uh, lights would be located. And then um, the second part of the application um, would be to close in the breezeway between the house and the summer kitchen. Uh, the roof line has been extended in the past to provide a uh, weathered over, overhang in between the two structures. Uh, the um, enclosure itself, the applicant is requesting to uh, finish it off with a white vinyl board and batten uh, material. Uh, with the extension, they're adding a window um, in that location and a man door. Um, again, the um, application itself does show a very specific certainty white vinyl siding. Um, this uh, board and batten vinyl siding is very similar to kind of the new houses that are constructed in the villages of Westchester, Canal Cove, that have some of that um, farmhouse style to it, uh, but with a more modern material. And then the applicant does show two different options they're considering for doors um, for that elevation. Uh, one is a, a true divided light um, door system here with uh, eight panes of glass. Uh, this one um, would be a clear light is what they're specking. 
and the second option is for our four pane um, kind of horizontal frosted uh, door panel system. Um, so if it's easier for the commission, I can go back um, so we can talk with the applicant the first kind of phase of the project here, um, and then we can move on to the second. That way we're kind of keeping things in, in order of what they're requesting. Is the applicant present? If you wouldn't mind. Thank you. So we have two requests on one application. Correct. So if we can we split that up then? Um, the way that I have it kind of broken down is just request one and two. That way you guys can talk about them kind of separately. Uh, but if you do make a motion, feel free to kind of roll in any of the recommendations you may have into one motion. Um, Typically, I like to break these down by two different applications just to make the votes very clear, but uh, the way this one's filed, I think you guys can figure it out. I did have a couple other options that I brought with me that was not included in his original uh, packet, if you'd like to see those as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, the new window, the train, the the slit in the bathroom, it'll be trimmed out just like the rest of the windows on the house? That is correct, yes. The The picture that I uh, showed there of the summer kitchen in, in that one sheet shows the original board and batten look, uh, which was just wood uh, material. Um, I do have some options that I could go with outside of the vinyl option if, if that's something that would not be approved. Um, I, there is uh, four by eight sheets of cedar material that I could just do batten, wood batten strips on. Um, as well, if the, if the vinyl would not be a, an option for the commission. Is this siding, this option here, is that if you can't reuse the existing siding? That is correct. When, when we painted and sealed uh, the current exterior, just not sure we're going to successfully be able to pull them off without them being brittle and breaking and so forth. So. I did find a company that, uh, a couple different companies that provides that. The only difference being it is it does not have the wave at the bottom edge um, as the existing siding does. Yeah, you can kind of see that wave a little bit in this photograph, Dave. See the wave. Mm -hmm. I mean, I go past the house a lot, mm -hmm. and sometimes you just miss some of the details. <laughs> My only concern is mm -hmm. I don't need them. you're going to a lot of difficulty to <clears throat> use the asbestos siding, save it and reuse it. Mm -hmm. But then when we get back to the summer kitchen that we're going to a vinyl at that position. At that which, point. which is why I'd like to provide some alternatives. The only thought there is the original uh, design in the connection between the house and the summer kitchen was a board and batten look. I was just hoping to go back to that original look. Okay. Well, you know, I I like that idea, mm -hmm. but I do like it not in vinyl. Sure. That's There's what the smart side. Correct. Yes. You'll, you'll see it. It's coming. Okay. Yep. Would you be using the smart side battens also? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well the only difference is with that with the siding that you showed us for the bathroom, it will just be a straight bottom edge instead of a wavy. There is one other company that provides this material. I just don't know that they provide it with the the bottom edge mm -hmm. um, like that. Uh, but there is two different companies that provides these um, panels to sort of match what's there. It's got kind of a break there with the fence. And mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope so. Will the newly finished wall be in line with that front wall, or does it kind of step back a little bit? It will be in line with that. It is, yeah. mm -hmm. 
So if you were able to salvage enough on the inside to do that exposed side and use the newer material for the return. Yes. Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So this, this bottom part right here, mm -hmm. that's in line with that side wall? There is about half an inch that is staggered. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's and very, that's where very close. You, you're going to keep it? Or I will keep it in. The, the thought was to keep it in line with that block, which obviously would be about a half an inch, mm -hmm. but just so that there would not be uh, from water coming down access the inside because I wanted to hang it, the bottom edge of the siding over the block so that there was no water access. Okay. As for the doors in the back, I, I definitely prefer the true divided light door as opposed to the frosted that is going to be sort of visible from the street. But no door on the other side? Just Actually both sides would be identical. Okay, so you'll have a door on each. Mm. Does the door option number one, does that, does that match the what's on the porch, the door on the porch? It does, it does bathroom. not. It, uh, the door that's on the porch is a full, full view. There's two. There's another door in the back. Mm-hmm. A half light. All of the windows in the house are one over ones? No. No? No. So um, that, the vinyl windows was, from what I understand, uh, replaced back. 15 years ago, something of that nature. And um, there, there's kind of a mixture there as well. The front side, you'll see the um, uh, the top panel has the grids, the bottom panel does not, but that's not the same on the side. Both top and bottom have grids. Can we see that side view again one more time, Andrew, please? With those grids in the second door. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense to go with option number one. I think so. With the SDLs. The, the only, th in, I know I'm skipping around a little bit, don't mean to do that. Going back to the board and bat and look uh, on the breezeway. Um, the thought behind that too was with the way that the weather hits the back of the house. Um, I've had freezing pipes that have happened um, back there with the laundry being back there as well. Um, there was going to be an attempt with that uh, uh, board and batten vinyl siding. There's an insulated version of that that comes from uh, Modern Builder Supply that uh, provides a good bit of weather protection um, was the other thought behind that. I think without having any vinyl to tie into here, um, we lean in towards the smart side or another alternative is mm -hmm. Laura or James Hardy. They're all going to fall in that okay. composite um, or, or a true wood board and bat. Mm -hmm. What's the, are you making any changes to the, to the floor on the porch? There, currently there is the former cellar entrance. Um, that door will just come off there to uh, make way for all the plumbing. Okay. The, and the reason this location was chosen, two reasons. One, there's no interior um, location for a half bath in the house currently. Uh, but secondly, the main stack, the main clean out, is about 10 feet uh, toward the front of the house um, in that area there. So it would be a straight line from that bathroom to the main stack. Make a motion to approve application CA 22 031 with the following conditions 
that the new windows and doors be trimmed out the same or similar to the existing windows and doors on the house and this at the siding and the siding um, at the connector behind the house would be the smart side okay um, or something very similar to that but not vinyl correct yes and a door and yeah that's two, actually two doors be the true simulated divided light eight eight light mm -hmm. which is door option number one but it would have the the true or the simulated divided lights okay and I would be okay approving that asbestos alternative mm -hmm. if, if it's not able to come off sure right. I think that's it we have a second on that. I'll second Roll call. Roger White, yes. Whit Wardell, yes. Jamoy Cox, yes. David Craycraft, yes. Dr. Scott Kelly, yes. Pete Lynch, yes. Thank yep. you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next application on tonight's agenda is CA 22 032. Uh, the address of the subject property is 4 South High Street. Uh, the request this evening is to paint the front facade of the wigwam. Now, up on the screen is uh, the photograph of the front of that facility. The area that's boxed in yellow is the area the applicant is looking to paint. Uh, the original paint samples that was presented to uh, staff for consideration um, was one of these two greens. Honestly, I forgot which one of the greens. They both were on there, so I included them both. Um, after talking with the applicant this morning, uh, they painted a little sample of the green color on the front of the facility. Um, they didn't like the contrast it had with the existing building, uh, so they provided the bare classic bronze sample uh, for consideration this evening uh, for your guys' review. Is the applicant present? Would you mind stepping up, please? Thank you. And Andrew, the section of the facade in question is the outline section. Within the outline, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was the idea with the green to kind of tie it to the building to the right? To tie it to both buildings, really, to kind of mesh it together. But you don't like it? <laughs> you don't like it with Chase. Yeah. It's got that taupey look at it. It just didn't mix well. You mean the greens didn't mix well? Yeah, the green didn't mix yeah. well with the taupe. I mean, of the colors that you presented, I mean, I agree with you with the green, I just think it would look, especially with the It's hard to tell. I know, the those, awnings. I know those awnings are green, but it's hard to tell in the picture. This looks a little safer. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Matches their awnings better. I think originally that was painted, or stained a, a, um, a dark brown, wasn't it, before it was painted? A long, long time ago. It's been a long time ago. So the bronze would come in closer to what it used to look like before it was painted this. I'm okay with that. So we're talking. Everything that's wood now will get painted this. Yes. The area below the windows, is it just wood? Mm -hmm. Are the rakes here, are those white or will they be painted? Looks like the entire vestibule front and sides, yeah. you want to mm -hmm. paint this color, and then just the two panels. Okay. You guys have any questions? And, uh, the, and the trim uh, around the windows is going to be, is it going to be painted the bronze also? Well, it's a different material. We had planned originally just to do what's highlighted there, down below, not up the sides. Did you want me to do up the sides? The downside to that is we'd have to go all the way up. 
No, he was talking about the two windows beside the door. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah, sorry, doors. I'm so sorry, yes. Are, and you're going to paint those bronze, or are they going to be a, diff, a contrasting color? I was just going to paint them bronze. Did you want them to be a I'm totally open. <laughs> I, I just don't like the I don't know. I just, I just saw that, and I thought there could be um, you know, some contrasting color. Everybody at the wigwam has different opinions. On it. <laughs> Everybody wants to give it. Fuchsia? No. Um, no, I mean, I had planned on just being bronze. I believe, Roger, that the windows on the vestibule are trimmed out in the same batten thickness and material. Um, the storefront windows are aluminum framed. Like the entry door? Correct. Now we could paint the, the like the two side columns that go up by the awnings. Mm -hmm. They could also be painted classic bronze if you think that would look better. What do you mean? The frame on the two uh, picture windows is what you're referring to. I think she, uh, Yeah, she's talking yeah. about all the way on the side. Right. Just those two. I think if you painted those, yeah. they probably just blend in with the, the wall beside it. Yeah, I think right. as opposed to this bronze color. Yeah, you know, the, the walls on either side of the building are brick at the bottom. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you. Were, it's unpainted. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Really. Just on the very sides of okay. the vestibule. Uh -huh. We were okay with the highlighted areas being bronze. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. you want, you want, you go. I'll make a motion to approve application CA-22-0332. 3-2. Three, two. Three, two. I will second that. In the classic what? bronze. Yeah. yeah, with the following conditions, if the paint color be the classic bronze. And I will second that. Roll call, please. Brett Wardell. Yes. David Craycraft. Yes. Jamar Cox. Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly. Yes. Roger White. Yes. Pete Lynch. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this next application is for CA 22-033. Uh, the address of the subject property is 53 West Mound Street. Uh, this application has uh, three parts to it. Uh, the first part is to uh, approve a new five-foot aluminum fence that was installed on the west property line. Uh, the second part is to paint the garage trim. Um, and the third part is for a new rear porch decking. Uh, the subject property um, was constructed in 1890. It is located on the West Mount Street Historic District on the National Register since 1988. Uh, Conveniently enough, I found that the rear porch on this home was added in the 1950s, um, and it was um, kind of pseudo added with a informal Landmarks Commission uh, review um, that was uh, trying to get established to kind of create some of the, the boundaries for um, the architecture review board. Uh, up on the screen here is kind of a photograph of the side of the home that faces Elm. Uh, you can see that rear porch um, to the um, back of the half of the property of the existing wooden fence from 2019 uh, and then kind of driving down the street here, here a little bit you can see the wooden fence and then the detached uh, garage um, also found out through talking with uh, different folks here in the city that the garage was the welding maintenance shop for the gas station that was where Rinaldi's Pizza was uh, so they live in this facility and this is where they did all the heavy equipment repair in the building that's why the building is made a block um, so just a little neat history for the commission uh, here this evening uh, the first part of the request this evening is for the uh, installed aluminum fence here on the left hand side uh, this is a five foot panel system uh, the applicant provided a, a kind of snapshot from the Lowe's uh, catalog that shows or Home Depot catalog that shows the um, fence panel. Uh, it looks like they have an upgraded option for the kind of puppy pickets at the bottom of the fence panel, panel there. I believe they just attach right to the fence itself um, and they are removable. 
Um, on the right hand side is the previous fence that was um, up on the property up until about March or April this year from what I can find when they did the replacement. Um, the second request this evening, uh, the applicant is looking to paint all of the red accents on the detached building from this uh, bright red color to the uh, bare little black dress. Um, and then the uh, third request this evening, uh, the applicant um, shows some damage to the existing porch. Uh, they're looking to replace the tongue and groove decking uh, on the porch with a new 8 inch wide uh, synthetic uh, deck material. Uh, the applicant does also show uh, extensive damage to the existing handrail uh, system that's up there. Uh, however, there is no uh, information provided on what they're looking to do with that uh, portion of the request. Um, just like the kind of application uh, prior, uh, I kind of broke this down into three sections here. Uh, that way you guys can kind of discuss them with the applicant um, individually. Hi. Hello. How are we? Good. fence that is adjacent, that's uh, abutting the alley, there's no plan to do anything with that? No. And then the fence between you and your neighbor is the same fence as what you took down? Correct. What was wrong with the fence that you took down? We acquired our, uh, a, a bigger dog, our, dog, our daughter is uh, epileptic, so we got her a, a seizure dog. He's a big dog. He was out there jumping on that fence and literally knocked that fence down. So uh, needless to say, we needed to. And for many, many times I was out with him, and prior to even coming, I was out there fishing. Okay. Hammer and nail. It was just falling apart. So we didn't replace it. He actually escaped. He was all the way past the new Napa building. <laughs> so the integrity of the fence was the problem. Yes, yeah. definitely. Just falling yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I mean, this is your first time before us, I believe. Yes. Yes. I mean, the style of the fence. I mean, we've turned in previous applications. We've turned this style down only because of the top rail. Um, and really, the top of the fence would look similar to the bottom part. Correct. We have approved this style of fence without the box top, which is kind of a non-traditional. Uh, this is aluminum fence, obviously not iron. <clears throat> that box top is not a traditional style fence. And I think also, we're beyond our height requirement for this. This property is a little bit unique in that you're on a corner. So does the, the front yard rule apply to this as well on the side when it's on also on the street? No, so that was one of the things with the existing fence. Um, because of the position of the front of the house um, that lines up with the garage, it's really close to that mic, um, <laughs> they uh, this would not be considered a front yard fence placement, um, so they would have the ability to have the height that they did install, um, unlike the application you guys saw several months ago uh, that had a similar style. Um, the Landmarks Old Town guidelines really just say for kind of like the fence placement and its visibility, it's, it's subjective to the style. Um, I think the intent when that was written was to have the open feel, you know, when it's appropriate and when it's a little more private setting to have a, a more private uh, fence design, you know, be more appropriate. Again, that was the, su the subjective part to it. Um, just for clarification, can you explain uh, with the positioning of the garage, just so I understand, I don't think we've had one come through on a corner like this before. So the, what makes the difference? Yeah, so if, it's really not even so much the garage, it's the placement of the house here, how tight it is to the corner. Mm -hmm. So the side yard placement of the fence would be extending past the house into a side yard, um, or in the way our, our um, code is written, a front yard scenario. This lot actually would have three frontages. Uh, it would have one along the alley in the back, 
um, along Elm on the side and then Mound in the front. Um, our code from a zoning standpoint to differentiates a corner lot from having two front yards, but when it's a rear loaded alley system, um, there's no frontage, so to speak, because you can't develop onto an alley and have a lot for, for that frontage. Um, so really this case, if you just imagine this road wasn't here, uh, the fence is going in line down the side of the house. So in theory, they could have a six foot privacy Correct. fence here. On yes. The okay. On the Elm Street side. Correct, yeah, because of its, its tightness to the right of way there. If the house is set like 10 feet back, you know, from Elm, then no. But because of how, how close it is to the corner, yes. And the, the aluminum fence, it, is it in the right of way or is it outside the right of way? So from what I could find on my GIS system, the um, right of way would be right on the back edge of the sidewalk. Now, without having a survey to show that completely, um, I just go off of kind of what my GIS system, you know, generically shows. Uh, however, the existing fence was in this exact same location, um, so that was not as much of a concern um, given its placement and the proximity of the house. It's been there quite some time, too. Believe. The wood fence. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like it. And yeah. Could have yeah. Sort of fallen apart. <laughs> uh, this is always difficult when you've already put a fence in. Um, or clearly, we're new to this situation. We, our impression when we bought the house is the house wasn't on the registry, so we didn't need to worry about that kind of stuff. So, hey, now now we know. Now, <laughs> yeah, so. Not the town registry. Right. registry the house historic registry. Historic registry. Yeah. Correct. Correct. I mean, something... Um, we get a lot of comments on it. Everybody says how pretty the, the new fences <laughs> look. The, the little... Uh, what do you call the bottom section for dogs? Doggy a, pu pickets? a puppy, puppy picket is what I, I find when I search kind of that design. Could walk right through. Yeah, the little guy can get through it, so we had to put the puppy card down. <laughs> That does add to it. Um, it really comes down to the box top and that non-traditional style that we have denied multiple times in the last several years. My recommendation would be a fence similar in style to what was in there before. It sounds like you could possibly even go higher if you're worried about your dog and, and the visibility on that side. Um, if he's jumping up on it, mainly because people are walking by might consider something taller. You mean the, the puppy guard taller? The whole fence. No, no. The entire fence. I mean, I don't have a problem with the fence other than the box top. And we've turned that down numerous times. Three times. So what's the, what's the top supposed to look like? The only aluminum fence, typically we want an iron, an order style right. iron fence or a wood fence. Um, so, like your puppy pickets, we have approved that style on the top without that top rail. Okay. Andrew, do you, have, you don't have any previous photos, do you? No, I don't have the, the, the ability to get the network in this uh, computer. Yeah, basically... They the, literally look just like those. Just there on the top to kind of mimic a traditional wrought iron fence. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, I believe this manufacturer calls this a spear point, this lower section here. It's basically when they take that tubular aluminum and they pinch it off. Um, there's different styles uh, that the commission has reviewed. Uh, the spear point, and there's some that have like a finial, which is a decorative cap on the tops. Um, and those finials can come any shape, size. Most of the time they have like a rounded ball on, on them so they're not actually sharp. Um, it's pretty similar if like I think your neighbor down Mound Street, they have a smaller, um, like a three foot aluminum or wrought iron fence on top of the sandstone blocks. Um, theirs has a arched cap on it. Um, the commission has also recommended mm -hmm. arch cap design. It's really because this top here is, is completely boxed in and historically the metal fence has had a design on the top if it was capped or not. So silly question, can we alter the top of that fence? Can we put something on it? I mean, is that something that 
can be done? I don't know if I've ever, I guess I don't know. I don't know, um, I don't know how it's constructed. I'm assuming they're panels that they all snap in. So I don't know if that top rail, this one up here, right. you know, that is detachable. Um, I do know for the ones that don't have the top rail, the finials you actually add on and they have like a set screw where you can actually like put them all on. Um, for this design, that's, I, I just don't know what you purchased. I guess I can't recommend. If so it could be possible to remove that top rail and apply. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's obvious. I don't want to, I'd like not to yank out the thousand dollars or thousands of dollars sure. for the fence and refund sure. a new one. So if there's something I can do to that one. Did you install the fence or have a company do it? I had a, a buddy of mine that does that and I had him do it. I think you, you would know, find do, out. Do, do you know the brand name of the fence? Uh, was whatever I sent you. Yeah, is that the natural reflections? This thing right here. Yes. Yeah. I think what I would do is go back to them or get their catalog to see if they do have a style of fence like we're talking about and to see if it could be modified. I think it all depends if that top rail is welded on, then it's you know, not, not coming off without okay. totally butchering the fence you have installed. Okay. Mainly it would be, you know, going into the posts in between the sections. If it's, I mean, it's possible it can be modified in, in the caps, but on, like you said, if they're set with the set screw, they may go over the top. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking you just make it taller by putting something on top mm -hmm. of it that looks, you know, mm -hmm presentable or whatever, you know what I mean? We've approved this fence without the doggy pickets uh, with that same style that the doggy picket is on, on the top without that box. Rail. Gotcha, so okay. So if, if it could be modified, sounds like every, every picket. Six inches, five inches, one inch. The openings of every picket yeah. on the top is that. Correct. And there's several different styles on that site. I'm sure you're but you can probably tell you what's possible. Just it may take some modification, may not be possible. Right. Right. It sounds like it would be pulling the fence out and have to replace it. Yeah. Is that an option for you? Is, is it possible with three different to table part of it and have them check on that? Yeah, you guys could table a section of it. That way they have um, something to, to work on. I think I can figure out how to make a motion um, for that one. because. I th it ultimately, they can just file a new application and it'll just be continuing the one thing that was tabled. That's probably how I'd go about it. Is an option for you? Yeah. I've got a question. We can't, if we can't approve that one, I guess that's my... <laughs> I've got a question for you. The post, are those just pounded into the ground or are they in cement? No, they're, they're in cement. Okay, they're in yeah. cement. Mm -hmm. are they, so they put the post up and then put the panels between the post. I believe so, yeah. I mean, I wasn't really watching him install all of it. I was working when he was installing, but uh, okay. I believe that's the way he did it. Yeah, yeah based, based off of the, the information they provided, I think you buy the panels just like that. I'm going to guess they're, they don't come apart. How long? Because right. the, the photograph shows basically the, you buy the post to your need, and then mm -hmm. the you panel. probably couldn't even shorten the panel. Like if your yard was, you know, six inches probably, shorter. It's probably set in sequence. It's set in sequence, exactly. I think modifying the top would be probably the, the best option to look at, if that's possible. I'm, I'm sure he'll tell you what, what can be done. But. So, Andrew, so we, should we just look at section two and three before we make the motion to table? I'm, I'm sure they'd like to talk about all the other options uh, for their, their complete application. So you want to discuss option or number two? Number two is paint. Number and that's the paint. little black dress right here. Correct. That's basically all, all trim minus the door. You don't plan on painting no, the door. The door, we replace the door without your approval as well. Um, <laughs> Rookies. Again, this was literally right before we got the letter about the fence. Um, I don't know if you have a picture. I, did, I don't think I have a picture of that prior. It was um, the K, K, the T, 
tear gating at the bottom. We had animals in there. Raccoons. This is the new door in this photo. That is the new door. Okay. Yes, it literally had a padlock on it, and, it, and that was what was there when we moved in. And then when we were making our improvements, we put this with the new door on there. Uh, literally mm -hmm. weeks before all of this. Um, Would the new door remain white or be painted no, the little it black? black. So okay. All the trim, everything. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All of it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, yes, she's going to paint the door. Yeah. She's <laughs> the queen of <laughs> painting doors. <laughs> um, we have that color. Yeah, would you mind passing that out? It's always really hard to tell a digital sample over a, a real sample. Looks like the door's a shaker Thank style you. SDL. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. I don't have a problem with the door. Uh -uh. I don't either. What is the truth? Is there anything else? What what is the trim on the house? Black. It's it's black now. <laughs> well, well, it's black now. Yes. <laughs> black. It's black. Black shutters. <laughs> also, that's been it's black now, and not what's on the nope. photos. Is it just the white that's black? No, the white. No, the, sh the shutters. The shutters. The shutters are now black. The front is not black. Like, just the shutters? in this section? Yes. They do. So the ultimate plan is to paint all trim this color? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> I, I haven't decided whether or not I would like it or not. Or it's too you mean dark. whether it's too dark? If it's too dark, yes. Um, the house, two houses down from me, that's, that's black, isn't it? The whole house is black? Johnny's house? Yeah. Uh, it's a... Burnt charcoal. It's more really gray to your front door. Mm -hmm. but it and that, it, yeah, it, it's like a washed out gray, and it has a, he has white trim on all of his windows. This is a, a muted black. It's similar to. It looks kind of like has a blue. It's like flat blue. Right. We use a color called mopboard black a lot. In fact, Scott's doors on his house are, are that color. So it's not you know, it's dark black. So it sounds like just from your comments that we, you, you're not sure if you want to go with this. I absolutely want to go with it on the garage. Okay. And everything on the garage that's red or that orange tone, I want all to be cohesive black. I haven't really made up my, my mind on whether or not I want to paint the front porch black. Okay. Um, which clearly but the I shutters are this color. Are they just on the front of the house, or do they go? The all the way They're on the sides side also. Yeah. Are you going to keep the block on the garage natural? Absolutely, yes. I would preserve that because of what it is. Um, it's just a glazed yeah. yellow block. Yellow block. Um, to my knowledge, that is original, correct? I, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, I would want to that. The red is just a little... Just for my clarity, the white on the porch is still white. Correct. It's just the shutters and the door? Correct. Okay. It looks like all your windows are white. So the awning on the back of the house, upper window, is that going to be painted to match the shutters also? Is that is that yes. part of the awning? Right back, yes. Yep. Here. Right back there, yes. Oh, I, you can kind of see it. Yep, it's, it's already black. Yeah, is it? Oh, I okay. can see so there's one picture so this in the back. Is, it's it's already painted. So yeah. this photo shows the new black shutters on the back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there are shutters and they're black. And that awning on the gable end is black. 
All so shutters and awnings mm -hmm. similar to the garage. Part three is the new railing for the back porch, which we would like to be black. The part three of this application. Where's it coming from? Oh, we're not even kidding. That part, yeah. Well, we're just thinking of the whole thing as a, as a whole. Right, right. Right. Yeah, for the rear porch, the only thing that was provided was for the eight inch composite decking. There's no information on what. Uh, I know we talked about on the phone, but there wasn't anything in the in this middle. Yeah, the back, the back rails. Literally, if you lean against that back rail, you'll fall off. It's so it's all. Yeah, it looks a little. It's really, really, really bad. bad. So the neighbor's, uh, the neighbor's garage, it has a black metal roof also, am I correct? Yes, right there. Although I don't think this is going to look bad on the garage, I'm not, I'm not sure about the railings and how well, far that'll go on on the house. Like she's not applying for that right now. But, but you're going to, you're applying for railings, so you're going to replace the railings with the same yeah, diaper all, railing? All, yeah, all those railings are all rotted and they all need to be replaced, so yeah, we were going to do. And you're going to replace it with the same style of railing? We had a, no, it was, it was going to be more of a metal rail, railing instead of a, instead of a wood railing. Yeah. You, you, can, you can, you can pass it along. No, it's it wasn't it, 17. Right? There's no spindles on the front. Not the house. <laughs> yeah, the front's got a sided, sided rail. Okay. Yeah, so that, that railing wasn't in the pictures. I know I had a hard time getting... Um, that's okay. Some of the photos you sent too, I, they were like a heck rather The shutters were one thing. You start painting all the trim. That's so a lot, I had to yeah. screenshot a lot of it to get it in the back. Yeah, I think they'll work with that. Hey, you can pass around the photos to them. So this is what we're thinking with the black on the top. It wouldn't be the wood top. It would be the black top. This is just for the rear, rear railing? Yes, the two sides of the deck. The black one? Mm-hmm. Classic black. But this is a metal rail. Mm -hmm. Said it's metal. Is this metal aluminum? Yes. Do they have to get a building permit to do that? Um, if they were doing anything structural for the the deck, yes. Um, I think technically, for doing the railing, my inspector would probably want to. Um, but well, what I was going to say, it's high enough off the ground where I think the Pickets need to be like less than four inches four inch. apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, you said something about that when we talked to you on the phone. Yeah. yeah. I would imagine the new rail meets the code. I just don't know about the other well, number. That's visible from the I don't know. I don't, I don't think in my time here anybody's applied for a. We've had two vinyl railings, a composite, and I don't know if we've had any metal that have been requested. We wouldn't, we wouldn't go with vinyl though. Without seeing no. the picture, are they round spindles or no, square? No, like metal has it's square. They match the resin. Okay. It's just that thin, um, that thin spindle. Mm -hmm. That thin spindle is going to be almost like the existing fence mm -hmm. that they just put in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the better. I'm sure it's the code as far as spacing goes, but. Because it's going to form a barrier. But the railing isn't on this application. No, it's not. I feel like we need to not include that just without more information. Okay, okay, going back to number two. Recommendation on it, on the railing. Number yeah, two. I think want to see that come back before us again. Let's. So the paint on the garage, are we okay with that? Yeah. On just the garage. I'm okay with the paint on the garage. Okay, and that's number two. Mm -hmm. And that's the. Yeah, that's the, the garage door, the garage trim around the, the, the 
Yes, it's one uh, eaves, that the the uh, shutters that? on the window. No, shutters on the house. You're talking about just, just the garage. We're just talking number garage. two. Yeah, every, everything garage. that's not block is going to be painted. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no shutters Correct. there though. Okay. Now number three is new porch decking. Janet, how old's that roof on the it's garage? It's currently wood, and this is what they're proposing. I'm just looking at the picture here, and it has a lot of red and orange color to it. I, I just didn't know if you've done like a sample of the black next to it. I'd be afraid it'd make that roof really red. You know, once you get it painted. It doesn't look that old because it's a dimensional shingle, and so dimensional shingles are usually from 2007 or 2008. Um, I'm just while they're th while they're talking. Okay. I just didn't know if like taking the red away from the, the trim would make it less red, or when you add like a totally different color, it makes it look really red. Yeah. Yeah. Why more? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Sean, what's under the deck, the, the rear porch? I mean, is it a cross base or is it full of gravel or? Um, I, just peeking through that one little hole, it looks like there's not a whole lot under there. I mean, I've never been under there. But I mean, wood framing? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it doesn't set on a concrete slab right. or anything like that. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I'd love to elaborate on that, but I really don't know. Yeah. The back porch, from, from what I found in the historical record, was out in 1950. Yeah. I was under the impression that the back additions were done in the early 80s. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if the porch was all the way to the old house and so they just made it smaller. Yeah, that could be. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to. Yeah. 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 So the the current decking is narrow boards, right? Yes. But now you want to do an eight inch. Yeah, I guess. I mean, again, that, that's that's kind of what we were looking at putting in there. Um, just yeah, I think you said something about the, the that those boards definitely would be wider than the other ones we had originally. Have you looked at the narrow ones? Kind of look, they're a little more historic looking. Uh, really haven't, but we we can certainly look at that. So there's a couple different companies that make those. Um, ASIC makes a pretty good one now. Who is it? ASIC, A-Z-E-K. Uh, my preference is an erratus decking. A it's a true, true tongue and groove three inch decking, which is traditionally acceptable. A-E-R-A-T-I-S. A-E-R-T-I-S. So, we, so we're looking for Three inch wide tongue and groove, correct? It's, it's three, three and a quarter, depending mm -hmm. on the manufacturer. The, the other benefit to that is that, like Dave said, you have an enclosed foundation here, and the style decking that you picked out is going to allow a lot of moisture to get down in there with no way to dry it out. Oh, really? Okay. So you're, you're going to cause some severe You guys are the professional severe, side severe like, Hey, this looks pretty good. Put it in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you find it? Being it's visible from she's the street, she's just putting notes on it. Okay, no, okay, yeah. okay, no problem. No, no, no. I just wanted you. Peace. I yeah. won't forget. Now, okay. if this, the three inch, is it actual wood or would it be composite? It's a composite. It's a composite. And you, you certainly can put wood down if mm -hmm. you chose to, to do a tongue of group. It's just a lot of maintenance. I just know I'm not very handy and I don't yeah, right. really well, want yeah. to be out sanding and all that yeah, stuff. We're going to put the money in it. Yeah. Well, when I was composite. on the phone with you, how I was explaining that the, the cut edge. It looks like recycled plastic. It's all pebbly. The erratus stuff is smooth, so it doesn't have any of that like grainy texture in its makeup. So you can actually have the exposed edge like you have now. Um, I know typically when other people want to do a product that has like the grainier edge, you trim it out with a band that goes across. That way you, you wrap it and hide it. It just adds more expense to the project because you're adding an additional step to, to trim it out and have it fit right. right. Also has a wood grain texture to the top, so it really looks like wood. Good. And the Aratus over the ASIC, you can also paint that product without voiding the warranty, 
which is a big plus because people tend to want to change colors eventually. Oh, can imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be the recommendation. Also, that you can see it directly from the street. It kind of falls in the front porch category. As far as the railing goes, I think I'd prefer you all bring back some more information for that. Um, again, from the street view, I think we would prefer to see uh, a railing put back almost identical to what's in there now. Okay. There are some composites that we've approved uh, for those. So but we have not we have not had a steel spindle railing come so before us what, until now. Yeah. Um, Yes, anything for the house needs to be on a new application. Correct. Okay. I don't think anybody here has a problem with your shutters and the awning, but before you go any further with that. Does the Aratus or the ASIC product have a baluster, balustrade system? That's no, not that I know of. What was the product you just got approval for? Um, what was it, it was a remember the name PVC that? material? What? It's it's a poly it's a urethane. They, they, they do make alternative balustrade systems that aren't wood, so they have a little more rigidity and they don't rot. Um, I didn't know if that was your intention with going with the metal, was just a, a lower maintenance product, but they do have, um, there's been other applications that have different materials uh, that kind of match the decking to make it all copacetic. Um, May I send you a message to... Maybe get the yeah. That product. Yeah. So there's there's urethane products, um, and also a product called Boral, B O R A L, which is a fly ash composite. It makes for great spindles. They look you'd never know they weren't wood, okay. but it does have to be painted. Gotcha. Same with the urethane product. All right. So we would approve the tongue and groove for the floor right. in a traditional. Right. Just, just for the back deck, no, no railing at this time. Do you want um, to come back with just more information on the whole deck project, or do you, do you want to get started on the the decking? I guess that's what they were kind of asking. Is they, you know, I think if we were going to put a rail back in the likeness that it is now, I think we could probably throw that in on this, couldn't we? Yeah, I think if you wanted to. If, okay. if it was going to be a wood or a composite, not, not vinyl, not metal. Yeah, we can, we can make that happen. Just no metal. It's got to be. So, Andrew, would we make a motion to approve this application and then go down lot item one, two, and three? I, w I would, just so that way it's, it's clear not only for these guys. Um, yeah, I think. You've had a good conversation on helping them, like, have additional stuff to consider to come back. Um, but if you guys wanted to go down one, two, and three and, and talk about each, um, that at least for tracking it, it makes it a little easier. And then when I send them, like, the notice of the meeting results, that way they have, I guess, like, not instructions, but, you know, something a little easier to to. So would we understand. table item one or just... That would be up to you know, the applicant. My opinion would be that looking at the fence design they have, I don't, th I don't think it can be modified easily. I mean, it would, it would be more expensive, I think, than buying a new fence system. Um, if you had really a discussion on your motion for that item and then just voted on it, then that would probably be better um, than would it be better to deny that item and with the with the That's it request, I mean, if, request if to you, bring more information? Forward? If you did, then the applicant would have two options. Um, they could either apply for a new application in the future with something different on it, um, or they could appeal the denial to council and see if uh, council reverses your decision for the denial. Obviously, that makes things a little more streamlined for the the applicant, so they have just a path forward rather than being stuck in limbo. Um, if we table it, how much time do they have to get it sorted out? Uh, the commission, if the commission tables for the applicant to do something, then um, they have 30 days 
so you'd have to vote on it at the next meeting. But if the applicant tables because they want to re review something, then it can be tabled at their discretion for however long they need. So I guess it's just at the comfort level of the applicant. You know, do they? So they can table number one and just not include it in this application at this time themselves? Yeah. should give them time to do it? Yeah, they could if they wanted to or if they wanted to see the path forward and what they have, then that would be their other alternative. Does that, that make sense? I've got to figure out what options I can do with it at that point if we can modify that or if I can hopefully I don't have to rip it out and start all over again. It sounds like you have a little bit more time if you table it yourself. Right. Just exclude request number one yep, from the fine. application and then get back to Andrew as soon as you can with, with some options. Yep. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion on request two and three? I'll make a motion to approve application CA-22-033 with the following conditions. On item two, the paint to trim on the garage in the, in the color specified in the application, um, it'll be as is. Yeah, including the door. Including the door. All trim, no block. Yeah, the block will not be painted. So do we vote on that? I would just run through all one, two, three, and then... Because if someone else has a thought on one of the conditions... That so you would second no, item number two? We'll just do it all one. No, just do it all okay. once. Okay, I know what you mean. Okay, on item number three, the new porch decking will be um, or is recommended to be Azek or Aratus, uh, the three to three and a quarter inch uh, tongue and groove porch board or porch decking. It's that too. And item number one will be tabled by the applicant. By the applicant. Did you say Aratus or and Azek? Yeah. I, and also really? to add to that, um, that we will approve replacing the existing rear porch railing um, with wood or composite in the same likeness as the existing. I'll second that. Roll call. Pete Lynch? Yes. David Craycraft? Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly? Yes. Jamal Cox? Yes. Roger White? Yes. Whitmore Dell? Yes. likeness uh, means white as is as for now so if you want to change colors and bring that okay, okay still okay because yeah. she did that's the first thing she said can i pay her black <laughs> <laughs> okay. thank you guys. Thank, you. thank you thank you next application the next application on tonight's agenda is ca22-034 uh, address the subject property is 55 franklin street uh, the request this evening is for a new uh, privacy gate for the rear yard uh, this house was constructed around 1863 and has been on the National Register of Historic Places since 1989. Uh, the um, Landmarks Commission recently approved in September of 2021 a new paver and brick patio 
uh, design for the rear of the home. Uh, the applicant this evening has two applications uh, to kind of expand onto that uh, rear yard improvement design. Uh, the first one they're requesting is to replace uh, this kind of makeshift gate they have in this location with a new uh, decorative gate. Uh, the gate they're showing, um, two different options, but that would correct me if I'm wrong. The first has kind of an arch top with a um, kind of railing system at the top, the top third. Uh, they're requesting for the hardware on the gate to match the hardware on the existing garage. Uh, the door itself will be made out of either cedar or oak, uh, painted to match the trim on the house. Um, they also have a uh, option they're considering for a um, tongue and groove uh, material that will be interlocked together to create that uh, gate's design. Um, for the um, second alternative to the arch, I believe it's this kind of flat top design that's shown here. So just the difference between the two is this one has a decorative arch. Uh, this one's a flat top with the same kind of spindle system. Uh, for the colors itself, uh, again, I apologize to scan, but it never turns out too well uh, for paint colors, but it will match the existing uh, garage porch and window trim. How tall are the gates, the new gates? I don't have them yet. Wait, no, I know. Wait, you get approval. Oh, uh, I think they're six foot. Yeah, yeah six foot. In the, the arch top is what you're preferring to put in? Yeah, that's that what right? the Mrs. likes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it looks nice. But what's your opinion? I like the arch yeah. also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I agree with her on this one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're on record? Yeah, I appreciate you asking, though. <laughs> would, would both gates swing or just one side? Uh, we actually for both. Both. Okay. Yeah, it would be both uh, because that really would be our main way to go into our backyard as well. Based yeah, off of other other um, larger gates of this size, I'd recommend you do like casters on the back end. Okay. That way it has actually a physical connection to the ground at all times when it's rolling. Typically the hinges don't hold up very well at that scale of the gate. I'm thinking like a dumpster enclosure. Um, you know, over time the weight will start to sag just from opening and closing it. You know, opening has a lock position and closed has a lock position, but it's that in between that adds a lot of wear. Um, that's just something that I would recommend for the construction just to make it a little easier for you. Yeah. Okay. But would that work with the gate actually being wider than the wall? If the gate swung in, I think based off the photo they provided, there's enough of a patio back there that they, they should be able to get that to, to work. Uh, this oh. this first picture in the packet is that picket fence still there? Is that, is that That's how we keep our dogs in currently. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that going to that no, is that, in the front of this correct? That's in the back. Oh, that's, that's the all back. the way in the rear. Okay. Sorry, Sorry I got you're talking about the picket in the back. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's at the first picket's there. The second picket's neighbor. The third picket's yeah. neighbor. I was referring to this. this I mean, one this here. picket fence right here. Oh, that's gone. That's gone. Yeah. That's gone. Yeah. It's not there anymore. That got taken out when we put in the patio. So this fence, this new gate will abut those, or the concrete um, blocks on each side. There's a retaining wall at the step on the back side of it, and it'll be on the front side of those. So the, the doors will, the panels will go right up against it. Correct. To keep it from going back and forth like this. Exactly. Okay. Correct. Arch top. Yeah. What does the missus like? The arch. arch. Okay. <laughs> cool. Thank you. I'll be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we approve CA two two zero three four with the recommendation that they put casters at the bottom of the each uh, panel of the gate. I'll second. Oh. Roll call, uh, David Craycraft. Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly. Yes. Jamar Cox. Yes. Pete Lynch. Yes. Whit Wardell. Yes. Roger White. Yes. 
The new patio looks awesome, by the way. Yeah, we're happy with it. Thank you. Uh, the last application, um, part two for this rear yard improvement project, uh, CA 22-035. Uh, this is for a new grilling pavilion uh, within that rear uh, patio area. Uh, the applicant has provided a rendering showing the, the, the new patio location here, um, the requested location for the grilling pavilion. Um, the grilling pavilion itself is a um, 16 by 18 area uh, just off of the rear of the home. Uh, within the pavilion, um, they're looking to do this, this um, block grill area and then also this uh, covered area, um, the pavilion itself. Um, Really the only things that staff had to know on this was the application just showed this rendering. Uh, didn't provide any indication for materials. Um, based off the rendering, it appears to just be a single slope roof that will shed to the um, west. Um, but other than that, for kind of how it's designed, um, kind of unclear. So I, I, I prompted the applicant on that just to kind of talk about that this evening with you guys. Uh, the roof's going to be is metal, stainless steel, well, black. The post will be 8x8. Eight eight. Uh, we're going to have 6x6 six six wrap with either cedar or pine, painted white. The ceiling will be tongue and groove, um, painted white as well. Um, and then the material, so they had a monster tree taken out uh, that prohibited the, the way the patio was, right on the bottom left corner where the tree was. So we're actually going to take the portions of the patio up and relay it and add in an inlay, which is right where the ceiling fan is in the concrete paper product, beacon, the Unilock Beacon Hill, with a border strip and then we'll take pieces in, of the existing brick that's been there for however many years. And that's what those little pieces are um, on the right side. We're going to reuse the existing brick. To create that border? To create the border. And then the, the Real structure will be out of concrete wall block, Unilock Brussels or Unilock a state wall. We haven't gone down that far to kind of match the existing pavers that are there. The countertop will be either like a leather granite or a, you know natural stone countertop. So the roof structure will is all wood except for the actual correct roof. Yes, including the tongue and groove ceiling. Correct. And it's, is it a true standing seam or is it a... True standing seam. Okay. Yeah. We haven't talked about gutters right, right now. The proposal we have, it just sloping down and then um, falling on like river rock bed. Kind of like I talked about, possibly like rain chains on the gutter, the small gutter system. Just on the rear there? Just on the rear, yeah. They need, these got about 10 foot elevation um, from the top of that patio to the bottom of this backyard where all the... Yeah. Woods up, uh, where a hundred foot tree used to be. Yeah. It's part of the so reason how we made we made the patio so big to begin with because we used to have shade, but we lost yeah. it lost it the first week of June. So how high is the the front portion of the roof? So we go nine feet to eight six. We okay. didn't want to get any taller and smaller because we have to have that pitch. And then we also wanted true rain coverage. Anytime I feel like you go over, you know, nine feet, you might as well be thirteen because you're gonna get right comes water inside. Out. Sure. I like it. It's the rendering had me scared. I thought it was a, a 3D lawn. printed thing from Costco that was. Yeah. I didn't know you had that much lawn behind your house. Yeah, it all runs behind us. We got nothing in front, but we have about uh, almost three fourths an acre, and you know, majority of it runs behind the house. We only got about 15 feet in front of us. No, actually, I was kidding because I know what's behind the house. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is Billy still alive? She is. It'll be nice. So you'll have a, the the ceiling fan with the light, or will there be how thick? I mean, how deep is the roof overall? I believe it's 12 inch or 13 inches because you're going to have two by 12. As your rafters, and you'll have an inch and a half of a uh, thirteen foot. Okay. Stand the It's all painted white, though you said. Yeah. It's gonna look nice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Anyone want to make a motion? 
I'll make a motion to approve application CA-22-035 as stated. A second. Roll call, please. David Craycraft? Yes. Whit Wardell? Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly? Yes. Jamar Cox? Yes. Pete Lynch? Yes. Roger White? Yes. Thanks, guys. Thank Great you. Day. Appreciate it. From Thank my you. perspective, if when people start putting money in their backyards, that's how you know you have a really nice neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. We've, we've had a lot of projects like this the past couple of years, and it's crazy. It's stuff you don't see, right? But you know, people are enjoying their houses, yeah, so yeah. it's yeah, really good. Sure right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for old and new business, um, the uh, project there on for Waterloo 2 on West Waterloo, for those that haven't seen it or were talking to me the past month, the uh, all the sidings up, um, all the trims up, the Da Vinci simulated slate shingles are up. Um, I think you guys did a good job with that building. It's turning out really nice. Um, excited to see the uh, Napa new location is starting to fill up some existing space. Um, you know, really, you guys, like, like tonight, you had the busiest agenda I think I've ever put together for you guys. Um, so it's really good, you know, seeing stuff still kind of moving along. Um, council is looking at doing an ordinance uh, that will do notice to all landmarks, uh, new properties that sell. But they get notice once a year, basically notifying them. Um, you know, council's recognizing the problem that a lot of people are getting violation notices to come to you guys for approval after they do things. Um, so they're trying to figure out a good way to kind of help curb that. Um, you know, previously I've, I've used intern help to hang door flyers. I haven't done one uh, since 2017. Um, so they're trying to figure out a different way to kind of, you know, get that going again. Um, so I think that'll be helpful for you guys. Andrew, this is just going to go to new property owners? I don't th think it's clear, at least it's not clear to me yet, if it'll be just to new property owners or everybody. I think, I think initially it should go to everybody and then pick up the, the new property owners. Yeah. And maybe every five years do a reinforcement on existing owners. Yeah, I think, I think the way it's set up right now every year and notice is going out, I just don't know to oh. whom or how they're, they're going out. So they got to be set to the residents or? If there's a separate owner or address, I think so it would go to, that's been a problem before. I think we would have to do it to the owner address. Um, I don't think we can send to the resident, but that's something I could figure out. I, I think to the owner is a little more effective than the resident because they're the ones that are paying for everything typically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, typically toss out. Rather than the, the tenant the toss stuff away. To someone else's name. Right. right. Um, yeah, so that's something they're working on. I think that'll be extremely helpful. Um, other than that, I don't have a whole lot to talk about. My mind's kind of numb from this whole evening's agenda. So I'm glad to see Taylor and Sons clean up their property. Yeah, yeah. It looks nice. Yeah, they're uh, they're getting ready. To, they're leasing it out to a, another farm and tractor supply company that's going to take over the space for a limited time, I believe. Um, but yeah, they're cleaning up. They are filing a demo permit to demo those old ODOT salt barns. Um, I'm assuming they'll get that done in the next two months based on the speed of how they're moving. They're moving all their old heavy all equipment gone. out of there? It's yeah. all gone. Most of it's all gone. Yeah. Looks good. Is there something else being developed in front of Walmart? Uh, there's a Wright Pack Credit Union that started that's right. construction that's right across the street from Taylor and Sons. Um, and then there's approval for a car wash next to Panera, but they haven't um, submitted any building permits yet. How about the library? Any news on that? No, I haven't heard anything from them. And then Rinaldi's, the old Rinaldi's, that's, you haven't heard anything about? Uh, so someone's looking to make that a carry-out coffee shop. So they're trying. Well, that's to, what I heard. So they're trying to figure out what they need to do for building permits, and then what they need to do for you guys for approval for exterior upgrades. I think the the exterior upgrades are very minor. That's all I got. All right. 
I'll make a motion to adjourn, but I don't know what time it is. 54. 54. 855. Yeah. We have a second. I right? second. I'll second that. Yeah. David Craycraft? Yes. Pete Lynch? Yes. Roger White? Yes. Jamar Cox? Yes. Dr. Scott Kelly? Yes. Whit Wardell? Yes.